are all the documents that you need to reconstruct your life organized and ready to go when disaster strikes? Hi, I'm Jonathan. And Kyleen Jones, and we are the Provident Preppers. Rebuilding your life takes considerable effort, but it sure helps if you have the right documents. Are your documents organized and ready to go at a moment's notice? Stay with us in this video and we'll teach you how to do that. If there were some kind of an emergency and you had to leave your home and may not even be able to come back, do you have the critical documents you would need to reestablish your life? We strongly encourage you to look at the post entitled How to Organize Critical Documents for Emergency Evacuation. This post has a lot more information and we encourage you to go to that and review that information. So today we're talking about building a family critical document file. This file should contain everything that you need to rebuild your life and we're going to talk a little bit about that. The first step is to purchase some type of binder or container that would be ideal to store these documents. The one that you see there is one of my favorites and it's just a school binder. And the reason why I like it is because it has not only the handle and the shoulder strap, which would make it easy to carry and very portable, but it zips all the way around so that anything I have in there, I don't have to worry about things falling out. It also is very incognito. It just looks like a boring school binder, so nobody would suspect that it contains very valuable information. The safety and security of this binder is of the utmost importance. If possible, you should always keep it in a waterproof, fireproof safe where it is secure from thieves and relatives and nosy neighbors or fire or water damage, anything that could happen. We want this binder to be safe. Let's talk for a minute about making digital backups. Now, we consulted with Joshua at Pentaroot Informational Security, and he explained to us that there are three main ways to store your data. The first is on the internet or in the cloud, but sensitive data is not secure on the cloud. It is a premium target for hackers. If you have sensitive information, you do not want to store it on the cloud. The second is locally on a computer or your device, which very much protects it a little bit better from hackers. In fact, a lot better from hackers, but your hard drive of your computer is not very portable. The third is to store it on a removable drive, a USB flash drive or an external hard drive. And the nice thing about those is that they are portable, but we have to understand if we are going to take that in our family emergency binder, if someone gets a hold of it, they could still cause you great problems. The most secure way to keep sensitive electronic documents is on a password and biometric protected encrypted flash drive in a fire and waterproof biometric lockbox in your home. In our show notes, we have some links to some of those that you might want to consider, but that fire and waterproof biometric lockbox is actually pretty small and would very easily fit into your emergency binder, but that would make sure that that information is very well protected and you could use it for your backup copies. Contact numbers are very important. Now in this world that we live in, it used to be I had most every phone number memorized that I ever needed to use. I've gotten a little bit spoiled with our phones now. All that information's in there and I'm not forced to remember those numbers. If you lose your phone or it becomes inoperable, suddenly you've lost so much of the contact information that you need. So you want to have family numbers work, school, daycare, uh, your medical providers, anybody that you do business with. And then you also want things like family band radio settings so that everybody knows how to communicate with each other. All this information is on our family plan. All that detail is important because it does help everybody be on the same page. So if you notice in this picture, at the very front of our binder, we keep a laminated copy of our family emergency plan and we blurred a whole bunch of stuff out there that we don't want you to see, but you can look at part of it and it shows you our primary meeting place, the secondary meeting place. It reminds our family what to do so that they don't forget where we said we were gonna meet or what we were gonna do. And also copies of these are in everybody's uh, bug out bags so that everybody has access to this and everybody knows where the meeting places are and how we will communicate. 
Important document. I strongly encourage you to keep your original documents in this binder. And then of course the binder is going to be in the safest place possible, preferably in that fire and waterproof safe. But that way you have everything you need together, whether it's you need to evacuate because of an emergency or whether somebody dies in your family and you need to put life back together again. It's just really a good idea to have all those documents in one safe place. Your priceless photos, make a digital copy. This is something you can totally store on the cloud. But I would also make a copy on a, an external hard drive or on a thumb drive and keep it with these documents because these are priceless and you cannot replace them. Also having your account numbers and passwords readily accessible is important. Obviously this is sensitive information and you have to be careful with that, but you need these in order to continue to conduct the business of your lives. If you have that on a paper, in a paper form, you may want to have some kind of a code for those passwords so that it is encrypted in a way that others can't just grab that information and gain access to all your personal information. You may also want to check out digital password managers. This would also be a great place to put your lock combinations. And any other information that you're just going to need to have and uh, may not be able to get from your home or from your memory. Keys. Make a copy of every key that's important to you. Your vehicle, your house, safety deposit box. Every key that you may need because you would be surprised how often you need it. We actually have a friend who there was a microburst and there were power lines down in front of her house. She grabbed her survival kit and she left, but she left the keys to her truck on the kitchen counter and she was unable to return to her house for three days. So if she just would have had her keys, she would have had transportation. A video inventory is also important. Our insurance companies advise us that we need to do this in order to file a claim and hopefully we never have to file a claim, but if you do, you want to have this information. You want to have everything in your home, in your garage, your entire property, any valuable items. All these things should be documented Make sure you get the serial numbers, capture the serial numbers. Right, get the, get the serial numbers. Have all that stored in a place that you will be able to access it and provide that information to the insurance company or whoever may need that. You will want to have a copy of this in the document binder as well as maybe a couple of other places just to make sure that you have that covered. Here are some great resources we hope that you will look at. These are in the show notes, but we encourage you to look at how to organize critical documents for emergency evacuation, also how to create the perfect emergency survival kit, and also prepper risk assessment. What threats should you be prepared to survive? We hope that this has given you some things to think about. Start today by purchasing some kind of bag or binder to keep your important documents in. You never know when you might need it. And now for the questions of the day. Have you ever had to evacuate your home? And what documents did you need or what ideas can you give our viewers so that they too can be prepared? And thanks for being part of the solution.